And one of the commonest symptoms around, dizziness. Casey Barros has been investigating. Everyone gets dizzy from time to time. Some people even get dizzy for fun, but it's no fun when you've no control over it and it hits you out of the blue. So what is it and when do you know there's something to worry about? It was about five o'clock in the morning and I woke up because I was spinning in my sleep. Um, so I was actually sound asleep and that woke me up and I, I sort of stumbled out of the side of the bed and I remember crabbing my way and bouncing off the walls to try and get to the bathroom because I thought, felt nauseous. We can start our conversation with the word dizziness but from that we have to tease out from you or from the patient what type of dizziness do they really mean. Some people mean they have a sense of, of losing consciousness. What we're trying to tease out is it a sense of losing balance. Hang on to the side and lean right back. Imagine an illusion of motion. They feel they're moving, although they know they're not. And that is what we use the term vertigo. You can bring your head forward. Quick, Whoa. forward. Whoa. Keep your eyes closed. If I know it's provoked by tilting your head, and that has to be positional vertigo. If, on the other hand, you say to me, look, I've had 15, 20 of these attacks. They just come out of the blue. They've occurred over the last three years. So the key question I'd want to know is, do you think you've got ringing, pressure, fullness, and maybe a slight loss of hearing in one ear. And is, is that recent? If all those, the answers are yes, then I'm, I'd be thinking you've got many ears disease, which is a buildup of fluid pressure in the inner chamber of the inner ear, many ears disease. It's a diagnosis that's often made and almost always wrong, because a lot of doctors think any vertigo is many ears disease. The third possibility is you've actually got migraine. Now, everybody thinks of migraine as headache, but migraine is a lot more than headache. Fundamentally, migraine has two components. It has the head component, which hurts, everybody knows about. And as I said, a lot of people equate headache with migraine. Then there's the brain component, where a bit of your brain stops working. My next episode was seven years ago when my daughter was born. I came home and I was about to feed her and it just hit me. And I almost dropped my daughter and almost fell out of the side of the bed and called out to my husband and he just took the baby while I just went through this episode for about five minutes um, and then I was unwell for about four days after that. One of the commonest reasons for dizziness is that it's a side effect of many medications like those for blood pressure. So that needs to be sorted out with your GP before you go looking for other less common causes. How does someone know when there's something really wrong? Right, that's a very good question. Most types of vertigo aren't dangerous, except if you happen to be in tricky situations. The best general rule to use, and that's a general rule that applies to all medical symptoms, the first time you have it, you have to assume it's dangerous. As far as one-off causes of vertigo, it's serious till proven otherwise, and the serious one is some sort of stroke, and there are many varieties of that. Recurrent vertigo that keeps coming back, only really three types we need to know about. Positional, which is related to head position, migranous vertigo, and meniere's vertigo. So for the basic sorting out of vertigo, it's not that difficult. Okay, eyes wide open. You see the eyes just involuntarily moving aside, although completely still, her brain is still sensing that motion. And that motion of the eyeballs you see is the motion she feels even though she is completely still. Your eyes are moving side to side at exactly the speed your brain is sensing from having stopped after rotation. So in this case, as in all those cases, your eyeballs are the speedometers of your ears. If we take all the people with vertigo, and we see probably five, six thousand patients a year here, the most frequent type, which is very well known among the public and even among doctors, is what we call positional vertigo. So how do you treat it? Well, it's very easy to treat most of the time. It's treated by a physical manoeuvre. It doesn't respond to medication and very rarely requires surgery and this is called the particle reposition treatment. Most of the time if a person is self-sufficient and doesn't get too sick from the vertigo, they can learn to treat it themselves. They need to be shown the first time, but there are some extremely um, 
able people who just le learn to do it. But particularly in older people who are not so mobile and who really get very frightened by the vertigo, we will, it's better off to be treated by a doctor or a therapist. There are physical therapists, physiotherapists who do this very well. And there are a few people in whom the simple physical treatments in an office or in a, at home are not effective and we have machinery in which we put people like that and we rotate them to get rid of the vertigo. Functioning as a mother was extremely difficult. Uh, it was hard for me emotionally to see my children looking at me so debilitated in bed um, and nauseous etc and emotional and um, uh, Professor Gibson actually thought that I had many airs, which he thought was unusual in, in a young patient. He did all the tests, I had everything probed and stuck in my ears and imaginable. And he sent me back to the hotel that night after doing the manual um, positioning to try and cure you of this. And I went back to the hotel that night and I was violently ill. So I phoned him the next day and he sent me straight out here to see um, Dr. Welcom Polar. And they started my first treatment and that was a year ago. It was all a little bit complicated and trying to get my head around all the technical terms at first, but yeah, it was basically the crystals in your inner ear, they sit in the centre of gravity, that's what gives us our balance. Once they start to wander off into the various canals, that's what makes you dizzy or gives you vertigo. Once we diagnose a patient, we just rotate the patient in the plane of that canal and the whole aim is to coax the, the particles back where they belong. I brought her into the plane of the right posterior canal. So now if I tilt her backwards, I'll be moving her in plane with this canal. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Okay, big white eyes. That's good, perfect, big eyes. It's not a cure. Benign positioning vertigo is a recurrent condition, but it has a very easy treatment. And how easy can it get an exercise? No side effects. On the rotator, about 50% of patients would be fixed on the first attempt. All clear now, isn't that great? It can be instant and very dramatic sometimes, but we always warn our patients that they might feel unwell for about a week, so people could feel seasick after a successful treatment. I feel very relieved, but I feel very sorry for a lot of people out there that I know that do suffer from BPPV that don't know about this treatment.